And before we get started here, I invite you all to join with me in this prayer. There we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, giver of life, we know that all we receive is from your hand. We live in a world of mass consumption, yet there is scarcity. You offer us a way to grace by calling us to be stewards of your abundance. On this I Giving Tuesday, grant us wisdom to know that little is much when you are the source. Through you, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. May I Give Catholic bring nourishment to the hungry, hope to the lost, and promote gratitude and generosity among all. We pray that this day of giving be a time of loaves and fishes, a world where even one small gift can be bread for the multitudes, a way where each of us has a piece of your merciful heart to share with others. In this giving, may our hearts be filled by you alone, who are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to start out with um, just the basics. What is it about? Some of you I've chatted with, others um, not yet, but uh, this looks. This is the agenda we're going to be following for the first half. It's what is Giving Day. We're going to give you a, a brief history of the I Give Catholic spinoff of it and why you should participate and also some frequently asked questions and of course time to take your questions individually as well. So what is a Giving Day? Well, and basically, it's a, a 24 hour online fundraising event that unites communities around local causes. They became popular, oh, eight or 10 years ago as the internet and social media began spreading at exponential rates. It's a way that we can build community with people who don't necessarily live locally, physically in our communities. Sort of like Facebook does when you have a group, uh, it may not. Our family reunion group, for instance, is located in uh, over 25 states. Um, and we recently had a family reunion where nearly 200 of us gathered. So even though we're many, we have something in common and it was a way to build family and build community using the internet uh, prior to the actual event. It connects donors to local organizations and needs, even though they may not reside in your area. It teaches donors and participants how to use digital tools, and it can be a fun event. Uh, think about it as competition or gamification, another new word they're coming up with. Uh, some of our generation is born with a mouse in their hand. Others of us are learning as we go along. You're gonna find this, I think, uh, um, in another slide, interesting who is actually doing the face-based giving in terms of age generations. This year, 2018, is the fourth annual I Give Catholic Giving Day. So it is, as I've said, a one-day online challenge. It's a celebration of the diocese and archdiocese, the ministries, the churches, the schools, and those who give to support us all. And it's a day for Catholic donors to be part of something big. Um, we ask our donors to support us locally at our parishes through our bishop's special appeals and Catholic services days. We ask them to be part of diocesan-wide or worldwide events like the Peter's Pence Collection. This is a day for celebrating all of those gifts, all of those ministries, and donors can choose many or a single way to fund. Frequently, um, this type of outreach will gather somebody who's an alumni who has moved away, but all of a sudden, because of general media and um, various uh, sources of uh, information coming out, I, I saw it last year on the Today Show, I saw it on America, I saw it on the local evening news, so it is definitely growing in awareness. Uh, our Sunday Visitor has taken it up this year and is one of our major sponsors. So when is it? It is the Tuesday that follows Black Friday or, uh, you know, that, that whole hype around Thanksgiving and how it's going to be the biggest uh, commercial day of the year. It's the Tuesday after that big weekend. It begins at midnight on tu uh, Tuesday, which is actually Tuesday morning, and ends up that night at 11.59. There will be a period of two weeks prior to this 
where people can give in advance. Um, anybody who has ever wanted to support you, an alumni, a parishioner, a donor, um, somebody's grandma or grandpa can go online to a single platform. They're going to be able to click and just Google I Give Catholic and very quickly they're going to come down to your organization when they type in something. So they might know St. Mary's and then there comes out, you know, 50 St. Mary's, but St. Mary's in Vulcan or St. Mary's, uh, you know, in Timbuktu and they're going to get to you very quickly with a few clicks. It's going, it's been optimized to work on cell phones, the smartphones today are estimated to be gathering over 50% of the donors. Uh, I tried it out myself with a crowdfunding appeal the other day, and it took me 45 seconds from the beginning to the end uh, because my phone stores my credit card information like most uh, users today do. So why a day for Catholic giving? Well, Giving Tuesday began seven years ago, and about three years ago, the folks at the Archdiocese of New Orleans said, why don't we try and take this one step higher? Why don't we make it really celebrating who we are as Catholics? So I, Giving Tuesday just promotes giving. It promotes philanthropy, whether it's to your local humane society, if it's to the YMCA, if it's to the Girl Scout. It's, it promotes philanthropy and the whole idea of giving back. Um, typically, the biggest percentage of year-round donations come in during the month of December, and it sort of highlights that with some media attention. So they're attractive to a broad range of donors, from people in their 20s through their 70s and beyond. This has been um, researched by the Knight Foundation. It's a fun and exciting way to be part of a bigger event to promote online giving. And the staff time that's required to launch an online campaign is decreased dramatically by joining with another group. Uh, most of us do not have the expertise in-house for either the um, IT or necessary commercial uh, behind the scenes to write a platform, to link all the various um, fiscal information that would be out there, and to keep it all secure. So what we've done as a diocese is we've joined with many other dioceses. Um, we looked at it last year. We weren't quite ready to jump in, but um, have decided to give it a go this year. So, why did Giving Tuesday come about? Well, it came about because two people were sitting back thinking, look at all the hype and publicity that Black Friday generates. You know, people um, line up for days when there's gonna be a special at Best Buy and, and miss Thanksgiving with their family because they've gotta get that supersized TV. Um, so it's sort of a counter narrative to consumerism and it promotes Catholic social teachings and is evangelistic evangelistic in nature. So when we are talking about I Give Catholic, you are, in a way, evangelizing about our faith. Is it a way that we're asking for support? Yes, but in a very different way than Sunday envelopes or register your child at, at the school. Um, it's something bigger and broader. So it kicks off that charitable season when many people do focus on their holiday and year-end giving. It doesn't conflict with Give Local America, which happens in May if any of you are participating in that. And it gives exposure and thanks to friends at Giving Tuesday. So we're, we're in collaboration with them, we're not in competition with them. Take a look at the results from last year, and I also did the research for 2016, and they had um, double digit increases, phenomenal results. So 3.6 million was raised last year. All of it trackable, all of it verifiable. There was a total of 616 nonprofits that participated. We this year uh, added 110. By the time I gave the list of our parishes, our missions, our schools, and our special ministries like Mary Grove and Bishop Barriga Association, we added 110 nonprofits. So I don't know how many new dioceses are out there. I could go back and research that, but it's a, quite a few. You're going to see the next page, a listing of them all. So last year, the average gift was $267. Almost 10 gifts were given on average per minute. And that's the figure there, 2,500 raised on an average per minute basis globally. So besides the United States, there were six countries participating with 11,455 online donors. Pretty amazing. 
for only three years worth of work. These are the participating dioceses and archdioceses for 2018. And I am happy to see the Diocese of Marquette, a small rural diocese tucked way up there in the north to be one of the participants this year. This has come about because of the goodness of um, Bishop John Durfler and uh, our department director, Terry Gitzinski. Terry was instrumental in bringing and presenting our case to the bishop, to the department directors, and getting permission for us to launch this year. Why should you participate? Well, it's important. It's important to fundraise. It's important to have unrestricted revenue that we can put to good use wherever it's most needed. Fundraising is all about friend raising. You're gonna connect with new, different, younger donors and strengthen the relationships with the current donors. It allows you to raise awareness about your organization and your mission, and you will also develop skills. Your skills, building an individual donor database, if your church or school doesn't already have one, um, practice in online fundraising and using social media, all of which I believe is going to be the wave of the future in terms of growth. We know that right now our Catholic churches have been shrinking both in numbers and in parishioners, as well as revenue. Um, we are getting older, we have to focus on telling the story of the good word, and I know Bishop John has been very um, much focused on the evangelization efforts of this diocese. So it, this fits in well with the purpose of um, this day. What kind of resources are going to be available to you? Why should you participate? This particular program, I Give Catholic, will give you a marketing toolkit. Some of you may have clicked on that link. I've sent it out a couple times already. It will also give you a social media timeline, reminder e-blasts. I've had a couple calls today, people saying, well, I didn't get the connection that you said would be coming. It's because the main point person for each of our churches is considered to be your pastor. Now, if he's been on vacation, out of the country, um, maybe between last Thursday, you know, was busy with weekend masses and then left for the retreat with Good Leaders, Good Shepherds, he simply hasn't had time to open it. Um, and maybe to pass it along to you. So I, I was busy telling a few people today, just hold on, give your pastor a chance, and also don't forget to remind them to check their junk and email boxes and add uh, the senders as safe senders because sometimes our um, spam blockers are a little too robust and something gets shipped off to the side, especially if it's the first time you're receiving something, perhaps from GiftGab. Um, people don't recognize that. They say, wait a minute, I was... Thought I was going to hear from I Give Catholic. What is this gift gift? You're going to hear about that in just a second. Um, hey, Renee. Last, yes, uh huh. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm not seeing your slides, and I maybe it's a problem on my end, but um, all I'm seeing is your blue computer screen. Whoa. All right. I hit share again with a new share. Are you getting it? No. Tony, no, how about you? Can you can you see my screens, my slides? I don't have them. I was just using the paper copies. I didn't want to interrupt with a question, but thanks for asking, Christy, because the paper copies are too hard to read. Well, and, okay. and Renee's recording this, too, for other people, so I, I just I thought I'd throw that in there. Um, somebody, hey, there we go. Those we see. You know, there was three choices that I could click on, and they told me to pick the one that I could see, and um, it needed to be a different format. Okay, well, thank you for speaking up. You've had to help me with that once before, Christy. Glad to have you join us. Christy no Marin is the principal at uh, Sacred Heart and Lots, for those of you that may not know her. We've got a couple of people participating today that do not have microphones, but um, you and Tony are, are going to be my ones that I can interact with as we go along. So my apologies. Uh, we're on slide 12 of 36. So uh, you suffered through one third with your paper copy, and hopefully this next two thirds will be better. So best practices. Best practices is going to be to personalize your online profile page and attend live or utilize the archived webinars. There is going to be um, many different ones that have been recorded and saved for you on the I Give Catholic websites, all of them free, and you can listen to it, you can share it with anybody else. I did notice that, Christy, your um, new Cardinal logo 
is up underneath on our, our major page. And I showed uh, Terry this morning too. We're, we're trying to get her up to speed and, and sharing administrative rights with her and Angie in our office as well. It takes a few times of logging on and getting comfortable with it. Tony, have you had a chance yet to uh, explore any of that? No, I did get logged on though. Okay, well that's a good start. Did you make your own uh, password after that long crazy one they gave you? I did. Okay, super. Well, you've, you've got step one under your thing. I've been playing with it, and um, sometimes I, I just get frustrated. I pull up my hair, and I think, oh, I must be stupid. But then I turn it off, or I get a cup of coffee, and I come back, and I look again, and I figure it out. Um, and also, I'll be honest with you, that blue bubble chat help and emailing um, help and support, and I give Catholic and uh, gift gab have been wonderful. I've generally gotten responses, I would say, in one to four hours, and I've written them, uh, I've reached out to them five or six times as I've tried to stay one step ahead to help you guys. Um, so I do hope you take advantage of that marketing toolkit and other assets and communications that you, you received. If anybody can't locate them, let me know. I'll send them out again. It has some wonderful things all done up for us to pop in. Things like a Facebook banner. Uh, if you're a participant in Instagram or the tweet, they've got so that it's sized correctly for you. You don't have to worry about those techie things, making things look right. Um, same thing with your website, linking buttons. Uh, that has all been done for us in that marketing toolkit. It would be good to have a dedicated staff or volunteer to help run the giving day and get the word out. Um, somewhere I've seen that it, it takes about 20 hours to run this campaign. To do an online giving day like this yourself, it probably take 200 hours or more for those of us that don't do it all the time. So while 20 hours may seem like a lot, you really can get by with just a couple if that's all you've got time for, or I say recruit somebody to help you. Um, we've got wonderful high school and probably junior high too and college kids that could sit down and crank this up. They might even get um, some credit in class for helping you. Uh, you might have some retired people that have some time to give, or because this is an online kind of program, Somebody can work on it at 9, 10 o'clock at night. That's when I frequently put my feet up and, um, and start looking at my laptop again after I've given my eyes a rest and had some dinner at night and, and ready to work my way through various things. But we want you to invite and involve alumni, parents, grandparents. We're looking to reach those people who aren't your everyday donors. Um, invite volunteers, board members, supporters. Just use this as an, uh, a time to launch, to put up some bright flyers, to put messages out in your bulletin with just, um, I give Catholic. You're not necessarily saying give Catholic to Sacred Heart, although that'll be the more subtle message. Uh, it's saying, come join us, be part of this, uh, celebrate our faith, and look at the opportunities that exist. Um, there, are, there are many. So um, we want you to use this opportunity to launch or build a development program. Some of our small churches and missions don't even have a website. Uh, this is an opportunity for them to reach out and be accessible to donors they may not even know. Maybe it's snowbirds that come in and visit them just during the month of July, but aren't asked to help support that mission uh, any of the rest of the time of the year. This is gonna give you that opportunity. Um, we wanna remember that the best practice says to thank your donors within seven days of the program ending and to have fun with it. Um, they are going to get a thank you within five minutes of giving online. It will be the canned thank you that you put up. So that'll go out automatically, and then you will have a list accessible as it's happening during the day live, but then that you can download anytime after that 11.59 cutoff um, on Tuesday night. You're gonna be able to download the list of people who have given to you, along with their contact information, so that you can write to them and thank them in a, in a personal way, maybe you'll you know find out why they gave to you. Maybe it'll be somebody new that you haven't heard from. So let's see my little uh, my little mouse just went kaflui here. There we go, back in the picture. Okay, will this compete with other appeals? We know, for example, that our schools right now are doing the Catholic School Endowment uh, Campaign Challenge. No, it's not going to compete. Data from Blackbaud and other big uh, online giving websites and software companies 
and even our own arch our own diocese I need to change that experience has shown that giving days do not compete with annual appeals annual funds capital campaigns or any other traditional fundraising activities this is something that is online quick um, and, and is very different from those other kinds now could you make your case statement for this I give Catholic day be your Catholic school endowment fund campaign absolutely Maybe a parish is struggling to meet their UPSCA goal. Could you put that out there? Absolutely. Does your um, Bishop Erica house need new windows and a roof? Terribly bad. So you put that out there, whatever it is. Um, general is fine, and if you don't even touch your page, people can still give to you. But will it be as effective? No. So we're really trying to uh, encourage people. And do I think all 110 are gonna participate this year? No. Uh, Terry and I picked six to really work with and I said no I'm working with the nine schools too so don't even think about that if you've got six parishes you want me to work with I will and Father Corey's was one because we know how evangelistic and how how vital he is and we and we thought you know we're gonna pick them across the UP east and west and um, really try and work with those people that uh, we feel would be open to it and then we can use your experiences next year in telling the story and hoping to get more parishes online doing the multi-layered effect that will only help you be more successful one question some people have when we're working with a, a bigger organization like this will i give catholic or us as the diocese solicit your donors the answer is no we commit in writing to never doing that what organizations can participate? Any Catholic serving organization in our diocese, those approved and are in the Catholic register. So this includes all of our churches, all of our missions, our schools, and then the apostolates that serve um, as well. So Catholic social services will be on there, Mary Grove, Bishop Erica. What are the total costs for you to sign up to participate? This is the good news, folks, and it's fun to give out good news sometimes. The I Give Catholic Giving Day costs nothing for you to sign up. We're asking that you commit approximately 20 hours of time, talent, or energy to promote it. It might be putting some flyers up. It might be inserting the can, and all this is um, in your templates. You've been given language, and if you want to tweak it and make it more your own, fine, but at least it gives you that um, initial, you know, sometimes when you're sitting down to write something on a blank piece of paper, it's harder than if you sit down and you and your students written something and you can just correct it. It goes faster. So that's what they've done. They, they've given us like um, thank yous, maybe three or four different ones, and you can take and pick and choose and cut and paste as you want to make it your own. But um, the diocese has paid for this program. Uh, the cost was $3,500. We did write a grant, Terry did, and was able to get a $1,000 deferment from, um, I'm trying to think right now. Uh, it escaped me. It's, um, I don't know, I can't think. It's Catholic. But um, they partnered this year to try and get more rural dioceses feeling like they could afford uh, bring it down to $2,500 instead of $3,000. In fact, I, I believe in this so much. That's it. Thank you, Tony. Catholic Extension. <laughs> I believed in this so much that when I sensed hesitation this year, again, I said, you know what? If we don't raise the $3,500, I'll give it to the bishop because I, I just, I know we're going to do way more than that. Louisiana's um, New Orleans first goal in their very first year was $100,000. They went over $300,000. Now, yes, that's a big archdiocese. So what if I did a tenth of that? What if I said our goal was $10,000? I think we're gonna hit it. I, I don't think we're gonna have any problem at all recouping and now our out-of-pocket costs right now are, are fronted at 2,500. So I told my husband, we can't touch this, we can't make any commitments in December until after I see how our diocese is done because uh, you know, I, I told him about the commitment I made on, on our behalf. We're a, we're a tithing household and uh, typically make quite a, quite a bit of decision-making in December with how the year is gone you know we have our regular weekly giving and our regular monthly giving but then uh get to do some different picking so i told them we got to save a little um cushion here in case i have to help out the diocese but i really don't think i will how will you get training well today was the very first one we've got a small group but um it's those of you that are interested that i think are going to jump on the bandwagon first we have 10 weeks to work with our pages 
So it's going to be live and well, not live. It's going to be in draft format from now until the 31st of October. So you're able to tweak your case statement, tweak your thank yous, uh, your descriptions, things like that. Look for a better picture or go take one. They wanted a picture of the cathedral in horizontal layout. Well, most of the pictures we have are vertical. You know, we got a tall spire next. So I had to ask Jamie to go out and try and get us a um, horizontal shot. And of course it was raining for a few days, but then she got it. And then we find out that the place that they put the logo was right smack dab in the middle and it looks awful. So I asked them, could they change that? They said, no, that's fixed. Let's try and get a picture that's off to one side a little more. So we're still playing, we're learning. Um, once this investment of time is done, and if it's successful, like I think it's gonna be, next year, you're going to only be able to add the icing on the cake. The cake will already been put together, mixed, and baked. You're not gonna to have to do a lot of this initial entry that you will have this year. So the trainings will be online, uh, accessible anytime, 24-7, um, and they're short too. Like today's, it's 327 right now, and we're about halfway through. So I'm actually doing a double, um, because I felt like to just give you the history here isn't enough. I wanna actually get you to the administration pages and give you some examples. How will you know who is giving and when? They will have real-time access to the donations and the donor information. Some people may choose to have um, a day where your young people are watching and uh, doing some outreach to encourage people to donate to you. Um, and this first year, we're not doing a lot of those extras because we've got a learning curve here. So um, if you just get the basics and say, how's it going with this year, that'll be great. These are some key dates right now. So the online registration opened up last week and it will be open until October 31st. People that do want to give, say they're going away for the holidays, but they want to remember um, St. Anne's and Baraga before they leave, and so they will be able to get their donation in ahead of time. But the big day will be the 27th, 24 hours. So you can go to I Give Catholic to see more information and training on various um, targeted um, parishes and churches might have a little different uh, need for the outreach and some of the social media sharing that our schools have. Certainly the schools are gonna have alumni as a key component. You can contact the leadership team a number of ways. Uh, of course, I'm the, the major contact here, and I'm going to school right along with you and uh, having to do some of them twice, I might add. But you can give an email to questions that I give Catholic, or you can go to support at givegap.com, or they've got this handy little blue bubble, and boy, does that work good. Um, usually they'll, they'll type back with you. I don't know how many, I need to ask that, how many people do they have working? I've worked with four different people so far at GiveGap. Um, Henry, Max, and Marsha, and somebody else. So every time I ask a question, uh, somebody else answers me. I think it's whoever's not busy at the time that you know you line up. And of course, the, the longer you wait, the greater the cues of people asking these questions that have put off going to try and do it. Um, so all of you that are logged on here today, congratulations, you're not the procrastinators in the church. So this ends the first half, and we wanna say thank you. Everybody stretch your arm up and back up, and give yourselves a pat on the back. Good job for being here. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. Your account. So it sounds like many of you have logged on. Um, there's going to be something called an administrative dashboard. That is going to be your home base. I would suggest everybody add an administrator. So uh, even if you don't think your pastor is ever gonna use it, uh, or you're the principal and you're the primary user, I'm still gonna encourage you because something could happen to any one of us. Tomorrow is not a given. And you want to have your account have perpetuity. You wanna have it go on regardless if you have you know, a double-edged migraine <clears throat> or break your leg. So uh, make sure there's a couple. So I started out and I added Terry and then I said, Angelina, you need to help us too. So there's gonna be three on our pages. Um, and these people can also then access your donation data, can help you with the profile page. Um, and let you know what's coming up for um, the dashboard has a series of steps that you're gonna see. So why am I directed to this Give Gap? Why did they need to do this? Well, they are the technical end for the I Give Catholic Giving Day. I Give Catholic did it in-house, did a good job, 
but quickly realized as they were sharing the story, their bishop was talking to the UCCB, people were calling them, asking them for advice. Uh, they have now spun off a separate department within their organization, but they still don't have that in-depth need when you're running uh, a campaign like this nationwide and worldwide. So they, they turned to a company, and they're new with them this year. I don't know who the guys and gals were that worked with them years one and two, but they decided they weren't happy enough with um, the smoothness of the operation, so they reached out and they've partnered this year with GiveGab. It's a nonprofit giving platform. A lot of what I've seen with them um, would be year-round type of giving programs, so different campaigns and different edges. Does any of that apply to us? No, don't let it scare you and don't worry about it. We're just working on the I Give Catholic one single 24-hour day. So this is a, a pretty user-friendly, easy-to-use um, format that's going to let you store and access your data, maintain those records, and manage your workflow. Something that I'm going to say probably 95% of us are going to do is download that Excel spreadsheet. It'll be available for 30 days after giving day ends. And then you can do whatever you want with it. You can import it into Little Green Light or whatever program you're using. Many of our smaller churches are are not using anything yet. They're gonna be this first, will be their first startup for gathering um, a donor database uh, and probably use Excel or something of that nature. Many of our churches, I think, have parish support data. Is, is that what you call it, Tony, that manages your donations and donors and parishioners? Uh, PBS? We, yes. Yes, okay. Yes. So I, I haven't tried to import that, but I think most of them will take um, any type of an Excel CVS common value um, spreadsheet status so and be able to, to work with that so that you won't have to type in again should you get 150 new donors you don't want to have to do that do you Tony <laughs> if you got 150 new donors I'd drive up and help you <laughs> I'll take them I'll take them too yep absolutely but um, these folks are good they have ways to um, shortcut and help us and that's what we hired them to do. So what's available to you? Your designated point person, again, most likely your pastor, is gonna receive that email and link, and once you clicked on it, you're directed to your profile, where you're gonna be able to put in your personal account information, which is all tied into your email address. So, for instance, Tony uh, helps out at three different churches or, or missions. So once you log in, um, your email address will then, once you've set them all up, you'll be able to work on any one of the three parish pages uh, without going out. Like right now I have a diocesan one and then I have the one that's um, ongoing priest education. Um, and then there's a, another one that's uh, sort of a, a broad-based one and that's uh, the diocesan seminarians. So those are the two that the diocese is gonna put out there. We're not in competition with our churches. Um, we just really believe in raising money for the continuing education of both of our, our priests that we know are so vital to our church, as well as uh, inviting and having money to educate our seminarians. So um, this account will connect to you with I Give Catholic. So you might be working at a page that says Give Gab, but know that it's directly linked. All that was done, I've been working June, July, beginning in June with the with the uh, applications and the grants and uh, July with listing all of and of course that's a big time for many changes to occur in parishes but to try and get the most accurate updates um, as people switch parishes new guys coming in uh, somebody's going over to Rome to work that used to be at a school etc so um, it does link and um, we've been working for a couple months behind the scenes to make sure it goes as smoothly as possible for you all so you're gonna have a little corner up there that says you. I took my picture and I put it up there just because it reminds me to smile when I'm having a day that I just as soon shut my laptop up. But um, change important details like your password. Uh, make it something that you, know, you can remember and write it down and put it away somewhere in a safe place because um, you can reset it. You know, More of us are having to do that with multiple accounts, credit cards, banks, et cetera. Um, but, just, just a word to the wise. This is something that um, you know you can use and easily remember something that you've already used, um, or create something new for this. I give uh, Catholic campaign, but you can navigate to your school or parish uh, dashboard, and you're going to see how that all links as you get more familiar with going in there. 
So it's, it's your home. It's sort of like your landing page on your web page. Um, it helps you manage all the administrative access. It houses important donor history and records for your organization to access year after year and allows you to make changes to your profile page. So if you have one picture and you decide, oh, I got something else really neat and good, I'd like to change it, go right ahead. Uh, remove the one that's up there and upload the new picture. Uh, and you can also work on back-end management as far as your ministry's account. If you're going to change or add an extra administrator, those type of things. This is what it's going to look like when you get to your admin dashboard. Uh, it gives you an overview. The reason that it says status unverified up there is because you haven't probably linked your bank account information. Some people are leery about this. They say, do I have to? Uh, is that the only way I can get money or get gifts is by giving out my um, bank account routing and, in, and uh, account number because my pastor doesn't want us to do that. We have set it up with the diocese account information using Tim Thomas as our main finance contact. He is the executive director of administration and finance. I'm sure most of you here are familiar with his name. He's worked here um, many years. And so Tim went on and he filled it all out confidentially. He had to give his social security number, assert that we are indeed a legal nonprofit able to take um, donations, and he did all that. So anybody that doesn't fill out the information for your own parish or school, maybe some missions are so small they don't even have one. They're, they're like linked underneath another parish or another church. Um, it will go to the diocese and we will distribute it. What does that do to your um, time frame? Well, if you put in your own information, you will see a deposit two to three days after giving day. That's how the automated nature of online transfers works. If you don't, if you prefer to let us do it or you simply don't fill in anything, uh, it will come here within 60 days of the giving day. And then we in turn will um, split it up. You know, we'll get one lump sum check and we'll split it up and give it to everybody as indicated by the report, you know, who they were giving to. Uh, St. Mary, St. Peter's, and Sacred Heart School, if, if you don't sign up. So people say, you know, do I have to? The answer is no. Uh, would it benefit you? The answer is yes, you'd get your donations faster. So. This first year, we understand that many people may be hesitant about this whole thing. Uh, that's why we're, we start early and give many uh, opportunities to ask questions. So, And here it talks a little bit about that status, unverified. So tip, if your diocese is collecting donations on behalf, so some dioceses don't give anybody the option. They just want to handle it all with control. I say, and Tim said, hey, if you want to be your own conduit, go for it, that's less work on our end. But um, some dioceses just say, send it all to us and we'll distribute it. Um, but uh, you don't have to verify anything if that's what you want to do. You'll see that status unverified until you either tell them, hey, I just want it to go to Marquette Diocese, or automatically on October 31st, if you have not inserted your own information, it will roll over and default to us. I verified that today with Max. So, do you need to add another administrator? Do it. My advice is to have at least two people. Uh, if you're the only person that's ever going to be using it, still make sure your pastor or some trusted person has access, knows the password, and the login. Uh, and it's associated always with their email. So everything's traceable. Um, they've done a good job behind the scenes making things secure. So this is an overview. Under donations, you can click the fundraising tab and see a full table of your donors and download the report. So all those different options will be available to you. Again, things like campaigns or events, we're only going to have one this year. So uh, this is, GiftGab is set up to help manage larger organizations like maybe the American Cancer Association that might run a relay, might have a Christmas outreach, you know, various ones once a month or whatever. So they can use a program like this to keep track of their various outreaches. We're just working with them for I Give Catholic this year. Um, yes, Tony, go ahead. What's your question? Well, I see this screen. Are we a campaign or are we going to be an event? We're going to be an event. 
Okay. It's it's an I Give Catholic fundraising day long event. Thank you. A campaign would be more like okay, Upska. So maybe some diocese uses gift gab to track their uh, annual appeal with the bishop's appeal. That's that's and so a campaign would last probably several months. It might be a capital campaign that lasts three years or more. So that's the difference between events um, and campaigns, just the length usually of the event. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, the editing of the profile, things that you're going to put in are your address, your name or whoever the contact person is if people have questions, um, your website, if you've got a Facebook page, any of those things, there's little, um, if you've got a video that you've done that just absolutely sparkles because the kids talked for 30 seconds and told about why it's cool to be part of the Cardinals at Sacred Heart and Lens, uh, you can upload that. There's uh, all kinds of just easy boxes for you to fill in as you go. Ours is only about 25% mm, filled in right now because I keep thinking of something else. I want to put, so right now the priests are away at the ongoing education. I said to Terry, somebody's got to get an iMovie out there for 30 seconds and talk about why this is a great program because that's all we heard from them last month was what a good experience they had. So I want to have an uploaded little uh, testimony from one of our priests saying that. So I asked Father Larry and he sort of laughed, but... Um, I talked to Father Tim Ferguson, too, and if I have to, if nothing comes back after this weekend, I'll be out there in a month getting it. And the good thing is we've got 10 weeks to prepare and, and get things up. Do you have to? No. If you want to leave it bare bones with your name and address, that's your business. Will it be as effective? Probably not. Um, those metrics, I'm just going to go back for a second, high-level metrics. So things like your dollars um, and their, your events, you don't even have to. Uh, use those if you don't want to because it's going to be a default this year. Uh, we're going to have the one day, the I Give Catholic event. It will track it for roughly two weeks. So the two weeks before when people are able to give ahead. Oh, and it's also got a, a way for you. So say you get a check in the mail and they say, I want to give I Give Catholic, but I don't do that online stuff. Here's a check. You're going to be able to enter that as an offline gift. So it still shows up in all your reports. Um, and some of you, maybe when we get good at it, are going to have um, a co-sponsor that will give you a match, a one-to-one, -one, and those dollars will roll in automatic with another uh, place for you to link it. But we're not going to dwell on that this year. Get our feet wet before we learn to swim. How is that for an analogy? So these are all the steps um, that you go through in getting set up. So right now uh, I did our ad organizations info, the number one. Um, I did some real brief storytelling. We're going to be tweaking it still, but we pulled a couple paragraphs out from various uh, documents that we've already worked on. You can also upload documents. So if your school has worked on a really great newsletter, they allow you to upload that newsletter. What if you have a terrific um, online registration message and you worked on a new program for that? Go ahead and put it up. Some places you can cut and paste and throw it in, like mission statements and things like that that are easy. I think the more that you put up there, and I'm not saying go crazy with 100 hours, but if you give a few of these, um, maybe you've got an annual report that just shows how your parish is growing and, and what the effects of Father Corey's outreach has been. Go ahead, upload that annual report so that people get, a, if somebody is looking at to see, are they still alive up there in Lance? You know, what are they doing? Uh, gee, I went there 100 years ago. I'm not even sure they're open anymore. This will give your donors a chance to get to know you better in a way that um, you put it up once and it's there until you take it down or change it. But people can do a little bit of research with you. Of course, you're going to have a link where you put in your website and that will drive other donors and other people interested. Um, get verified to collect donations. That's where they ask you to um, attest that you are uh, able to take donations uh, and to put in your own banking, checking, and routing information. If you don't do that third step, you're just going to have that little yellow banner up there saying you haven't been verified. <clears throat> we can either call them and say, I want a link to Marquette. Uh, I don't want to put in my own information. Um, I'll wait 60 days and, and get my check from them. Or or people can just do nothing, and by default on October 31st, that's what's going to happen anyway. Um, donation levels, 
that's for a more advanced campaign. Maybe when you have, you know, like silver, gold level bronze donors and you say, okay, anybody above 5,000 is going to be invited to father's house for uh, dinner for eight or whatever, like the bishop ra uh, raffled off um, at the Father Marquette uh, auction last year. But that isn't going to be anything we need to worry about this year. There is a minimum amount that people can donate online to us, and it's $25. But as you saw in our earlier <clears throat> slides, uh, the average gifts have been way, way higher than that. So don't worry about uh, scaring people away by the $25 minimum. Add a thank you message. That's going to be a very important one for everybody to craft it. And they give you templates, examples. We're not looking for anything long here. Remember, it's been ideally set up to download and optimize on smartphones. And if you have other fundraisers going on, uh, you could do that. We are not paid, we have not paid for any other support other than the I Give Catholic. So as far as, you know, you're wondering if you could put your parish raffle up here, that's not happening till spring. The answer is, I don't think so. I think our, 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 what we've purchased so far, what we've paid for for you is just for this one single event. Okay, um, you can add administrators. Offline donations would be those checks or somebody comes in with a cash donation. And if you have any matching sponsors, I don't, I don't anticipate using that feature this year, but you could do all those things through this page. Think about adding peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Those are when, uh, so you got a crowdfunding page and you're asked to share it with people in your address book. That's a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, to steward existing donors and leverage their personal networks. So maybe your existing families that are current students at Sacred Heart have an aunt or an uncle or a grandma or grandpa that they wanna spread this message to. They could sit, if you allow them in here, if you do that peer-to-peer -peer page, adding uh, other groups, they will be able to share it. Now, can they also share it by just telling people, hey, go to I Give Catholic and, and see what Sacred Heart has joined up with this year? Yes, that's the simple way to do it. There is additional training on that. I haven't even taken this part yet. I feel I need to get the basics down this year. So I think we've gone through most of the tabs on the admin dashboard. Um, one of the best things to do is to link it. So as many sources of media that you and your church or organization is using, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, if you're, uh, put links, certainly your website, put a link um, so that it is easy for people. You wanna make it easy for people to give to you. That's the whole thing. And, and then you can share your page and others can share your page through their social media contacts. So um, for instance, when I was organizing my family reunion and set up a group, I made sure I sent it out a couple different ways. Like every family had one major person and so, you know, people change emails today as fast as some of them change cars or whatever, you know, that, that happens every year or two. So uh, we, we made point people in the family tree and they shared our links that way so that uh, just to reach out and to connect with as many people as possible. There, <clears throat> there is um, a page donated just to creating an impactful profile page. They'll talk to you about things like what emotions to capture in a picture, you know, not the usual stand them up, smile, document that we had, although I've seen some beautiful First Communion pages this year. Some people are doing a much better job getting a little more creative, but things like um, how to use um, words to make a picture come alive, and certainly pictures tell our story. So you might have one picture of the outside of the school, but then you want to zoom in on some wonderful faces of the kids as they work with their gardens or the evangelistic outreach that um, how many new people were baptized at your church this past Easter, you know, just, just share that excitement with your page. And you can begin working on that anytime you want. And you can invite others to join you too. So you can have parents, volunteers, your pastor, you can all work at collaborating. It doesn't have to fall on one person. So if you have those questions after today, technical, platform, or registration related, feel free to log into that chat bubble. I'll tell you, they, they are good. And um, if the bubble doesn't appeal to you, you can send questions to I Give Catholic or support to GiftGab. GiftGab is a little more toward 
the financial end of things if you're having any problems with that. It was pretty straightforward though. I printed it off and gave it to Tim Thomas. It was two pages. It asked for things like maybe our EIN number, um, you know, the legal description name. So you might go by uh, St. Anne's in Barriga, but your real name is St. Anne's in the Northwoods or something. You know, I've, I've run into a couple of the campus ministries that have three or four names registered. So you need to find out your official legal um, description and uh, enter that for your name. And of course, if you have any questions for me, um, anytime. I usually carry my cell phone with because I'm a part-time employee with 20 hours a week. And right now with getting all this done, um, I've used up my hours for August as of tomorrow. Um, but I told Terry, I, I won't be back in the office until September 10th, but I will monitor my phone messages and I will monitor emails and get back to people. And if I can't answer it, uh, I'll refer you to somebody who can. The, the support team has been really, really good. Should we end with a prayer? We've got 10 minutes, and then if you have any other questions, I'm going to invite you to, uh, to shoot those out too or just brainstorm with me. You might be overflowing with information at this point. I know I, I felt that way sometimes. So let's end with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, giver of life, we know that all we receive is from your hand. We live in a world of mass consumption, yet there is scarcity. You offer us a way to grace by calling us to be stewards of your abundance. On this Giving Tuesday, grant us wisdom to know that little is much when you are the source. Through you, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. May I give Catholic bring nourishment to the hungry, hope to the lost, promote gratitude and generosity among us all. We pray that this day of giving be a time of loaves and fishes, a world where even one small gift can be bread for the multitudes. A way where each of us has a piece of your merciful heart to share with others. In this giving, may our hearts be filled by you alone, who are Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to say thank you for joining us today. You are awesome. You are the few, the proud, and the brave that stuck your foot out and said, hey, I'm going to join in today and uh, see what this is all about. So uh, the rest of them will be recorded or, or live. You can, you can join like a week from today. There's one uh, coming up that Gift Gab will be putting on. No, excuse me, I Give Catholic will be putting on. And they will um, take questions and answer live. Now, if that time frame isn't good for you, it's going to be recorded. There are a lot of trainings out there that you can take in bites and pieces. You don't have to sit down and do it all in one day. I'm going to try and end this right now and stop the sharing there. And, oh, yes. Hi, Christine and uh, Kathy. And looks like Beth had to leave us. But anyway, how do you feel at this point? Uh, overwhelmed? Too much information? A good amount of information for your first uh, go round with me? I think it was a good amount of information. Good. You always are great to have, and you tell me when my slides are <laughs> showing too. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Tony, you and I have been uh, emailing back and forth and had a phone conversation. Does this help at all? Oh, yes. Training is always invaluable. Good. Okay. Any questions I can answer now? Well, I do have, uh, oh, Christy, do you have one? When, when we update our event pages, are they then live out there for everyone to see uh, starting as soon as tomorrow, as soon as I put one out there? No, everything stays in draft form that you can change, nobody but you can see, up until the October 31st date when it closes. And, and that's that when it gets public. Uh, it won't get... I don't think it gets public until that two week window when people can give. I'll have to ask that question. Does it get public November 1st or does it get public November 12th when they actually open up for your early two week giving window? So the answer is one or the other, I don't know which, but it's not gonna be live until uh, at least November, Tony. So, okay, thank you. You got a nice long period here to play and tweak and and some people will just simply put in their address in one picture. And hey, if that's all you've got time for this year, you've maybe done more than what half of our parishes are going to do. Half of them 
aren't going to be interested. Um, it took a lot of talking and uh, for the ground to be fertile this year for us to give this a go here at our at our diocesan level. Um, because I think online giving just isn't something that's been really promoted in our Catholic culture very long. Let's say this program is only in its fourth year. So uh, some pastors and some outreaches have been doing it because they're techies and they're really into it, but those are few and far between. All right, well, it's five minutes to four. I wanna be respectful of your time. Thank you so much for your interest and your, your, uh, your presence here today. You encourage me, all of you who are um, eager learners and participants and always wanting to help further your mission and cause. And I'm working behind the scenes with all of you very hard. And, uh, Thank you. We'll God be there bless. To help you. Yeah. God bless you too. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.